Hello. Welcome to the Tanzo Service Mesh Global Namespace and Onboarding Demo. In this demo, we'll show you a pre-built global namespace in Tanzo Service Mesh that is built across clouds and regions. We will show the power of service discovery and end-to-end -end encryption in the global namespace. We will also show a representation of global load balancing managed by Tanzo Service Mesh. In the second part of the demo, we will show you how we onboard new Kubernetes clusters into the service. We will deploy an application across two clusters, and then we'll create a global namespace that will establish again our service discovery and encryption across all the services of our application. In this demo, we use an application called Acme Fitness Demo. This open source VMware developed application is a full microservices distributed polyglot application. That means that every function in the application is a microservice and every microservice is written in a different programming language. Some in Python, some in Go, some in JavaScript. This application also has different data stores for the different services like Mongo and Redis. And many of our customers and our employees are using those applications to test out microservices platforms. We can see the application here. This is the front page of the application itself. And in the back end, there's the catalog, which provides us with the uh, products on the store and the pictures you see also coming from the catalog service. Going into Tanzu Service Mesh, we can see we have three clusters attached. First one is running in Amazon in EKS, and the other two are running on-prem at VMware in two separate regions. This will allow us to demonstrate how we stretch an application across clusters. Going into a cluster called PKS4, we have all the microservices of Acme Fitness deployed here, except for the catalog service, which we deployed in the EKS cluster. Again, this will allow us to demonstrate how we can stretch an application between clusters and between clouds and provides full encryption and full service discovery. The third cluster called PKS NSX2 runs the entire application, including catalog and all the other services. And this will allow us to demonstrate high availability. Going to the global namespace, we have a global namespace here called Acme that we created previously. And we can see the three clusters here laid out in this topology map. This topology map is very useful. It can allow customers to see the dependencies between the different services across clusters. And we can see also the communication direction that goes on between all these services. Customers use these topology maps to troubleshoot better and to identify any cascading or downstream and upstream issues they have with their applications. We can see the request per second. If we hover on any service in the map, we can see important information like the request per second for that service, the error, late, the error rates and the latencies on that service. The bottom is our first on-prem cluster that runs all the services except for the catalog. And we see the communication all the way up to the EKS cluster where the, the front end shopping is communicating with the catalog to provide a catalog service for our application. The middle cluster is where we run the entire application with all its services for availability purposes and we'll see the load balancer sending traffic to both deployments, again, for availability purposes. Now, throughout this global namespace, we have end-to-end -end MTLS encryption. That means that not only the front end speaks with the back end on the same cluster using an encrypted channel, but also across clusters, all the communication is encrypted. The entire global namespace also provides a full name resolution to all the services so that when shopping 
wants to talk with catalog, it does not need to know the underlying infrastructure details, just points out to the catalog. Let's see how it works. So in this console, we see the cluster of PKS4 and EKS, which are run all the application. So we see on PKS4 that we have all the microservices except for the catalog service. And if we switch to EKS, we can see that it runs the catalog service. Now looking into the virtual services on the EKS server, you can see that all the microservices in my global namespace have got the same domain name, which is called acme.local. This This domain name is coming from the setting that we set in the global namespace. We can see it here if we edit the global namespace and we give the, all the microservices the domain name acme.local. That means that when service shopping wants to talk with service catalog, it does not need to point to the ingress controller of the EKS cluster. The developer just needs to say, communicate with the catalog service and all the underlying plumbing and communication and routing will be managed by global namespace. Now let's see how this plumbing happens. Uh, if we go into the cluster and look at the service entries, the service centers are basically the DNS configuration that tells the services how to talk with each other. Um, and we see in the main cluster, the service entry for the catalog B service. If we edit it, we see that the system tells the shopping service to get to the catalog service it needs to go through the ingress controller of the EKS cluster. The developers don't need to know this information. If they would not have GNS, they would have to know this information and write it somewhere. But with GNS, it's all set up automatically in the back end. Now let's check the communication channel to see if it's all encrypted. Running the Istio control command, we can then tell the system to show us the authentication policy if TLS is set up between the shopping front end pod, let's take its name here, and the catalog service. And we see that we point to the catalog service now not by its pod name, but by the domain name that we gave it in the global namespace. This is exactly how developers will find services on different clusters. And we can see that everything is MTLS set up. So it's all encrypted and it's not dependent on any infrastructure uh, set up. It is service to service communication encryption. Matter of fact, if we remove the catalog from the command and we look at all the communication from the front end to the back end services, everything is empty list, no matter where it's running, if it's running on the same cluster or, or, or on a separate cluster in, in, in different cloud. Now let's go through a process of onboarding new clusters into global namespace. For this purpose, we're gonna go into a new organization at VMware Cloud. And you can see that on this organization, there are no clusters set up whatsoever. For the purpose of demo, we created two clusters, two COPS clusters that don't have anything installed on them, COPS1 and COPS2, and those are the clusters we're gonna use. So the first cluster we're gonna onboard is COPS1. In terms of service mesh, we're going to give it a name. Let's call it COPS1. 
And we're going to generate a YAML file and a security token that we can run on the cluster to install the Tanzu Service Mesh agents. As soon as we run these YAML files, the VMware Cloud Tanzu Service Mesh is waiting for the cluster to communicate back. Looking at the cluster, we see that we have a new namespace called AllSpark, which is the code name for Tanzu Service Mesh internally. And in this namespace, we have a few pods being deployed. The first pod is for a proxy, a manager, and a token. As soon as this cluster communicates back to the service, with the green button to install NSX Service Mesh or Tanzu Service Mesh is created and this will allow us to install Istio on the cluster. So as soon as we click that button, we see that Istio has been deployed on our cluster. And this is a curated version of Istio. It's one-to-one -one mapped with vanilla, but it is with additional components to communicate back to us. Now, while this is running, we're gonna deploy the second cluster, COPS2, let's onboard that. Deploying the YAML file and the token, and let's wait for the cluster to communicate back and for the first cluster to install Service Mesh. Let's see the different pods that have been deployed in the Istio namespace. I'm going to speed up the video a bit. Now we see them here in the Tanzu Service Mesh console but there are no services deployed. We will now go into the console to deploy the application. We will deploy the application part on COPS1 and the catalog service on COPS2. Switching into COPS1, we're applying the YAML file. You can see that the YAML file we're deploying is for cluster one. That will deploy the front end and a few other services in the back end. Looking at the pods, we see that each pod has two containers. This is because we're deploying both the proxy for service mesh and the application pod yeah, container. Let, let's switch to COPS2 and deploy the second part of the application, which is only the catalog service. After both clusters have deployed the services on, we will look at the ingress, how to access the application on the, cluster, the first cluster. So looking at the Istio services, let's paste that in the browser and we can see the application, but we can see that there's no pictures or items in the catalog. And that's because we did not set up the communication or the global namespace between the two application components. Now let's edit the YAML file that we used to deploy the first cluster, and we'll see how we told the front end to find the catalog service. And there's an environment variable here that we set up that tells the shopping front end to find the catalog based on the domain name demo.local. This is the domain name we're going to set up in our global namespace. Going to create the global namespace, we're going to run a watch on COPS1 virtual services so you can see the propagation of DNS entries live once we create the global namespace. You're going to see them start to, uh, to run down into the cluster. So 
So create a new global namespace, we call it demo, and we set up the domain as we set up in the YAML file as demo.local. The next step, we're gonna need to tell the global namespace which services are part of it. And we're gonna use a selector criteria based on the namespace in each cluster they reside on. In the future, we're gonna have additional criteria. But in this case, we put namespace default in, in COPS1 and we can see that it sees the services to be added. And on cluster number two, we select the same namespace and we can see it sees the catalog services uh, deployed here. And the last step, we're gonna tell Global Namespace to set up a mandatory MTLS encryption across the board between all the services. Going back to our console and our watch on the virtual services, we now see the DNS entries for all the services, wherever they are, starting to propagate down into the cluster so that when we want to set up a communication between one service to another, they'll be able to find each other on the domain name without needing to refer to any underlying infrastructure details like ingress controllers and access points and load balancers. We can see them starting to propagate down one by one. Once the DNS entries have propagated down, we're gonna go back to our application. It takes a couple of minutes for everything to be set up so we can start seeing the catalog. So what we want to do is go and start sending traffic into the application using the traffic generator so that it builds our topology map in the back end. We'll speed up the process of it. Now let's go back to our application. We click again on home and we see the pictures starting to come up. That means that communication is being established now between the shopping running on premises and the catalog service running in the cloud. Now let's go back to our global namespace and refresh a few times until we see the connection established in our topology map. Now the topology map has caught up with the traffic that's been flowed between the services into the application. We see in the topology map, the two clusters, the Acme Fitness app, most of it deployed on the blue cluster and the catalog deployed on the purple cluster. And we see the communication between the front end and the catalog service. The dotted line tells us the communication is encrypted. And as we've seen in the beginning of the demo, we also have service discovery across the board here. This concludes our Tons of Service Mesh demo. Thank you for watching.